Today, after several years, we finally return to the back way to Crown King. This trail is always changing and difficult in different areas, and after a recent snowstorm, we attempt to blaze trail and be the first ones of the day to make it to the top. Hello everybody and welcome, long time no see. It has been a little bit since I've been able to put out a video, since I've been busy with work things and traveling, but rest assured there are so many backlogged adventures waiting to get edited, and I'm finally starting to get caught up on that. Which is why you may notice that this one has some snow and was very clearly filmed when it was much colder. So what is in the video is not the current conditions, but I hope you enjoy it nonetheless. This trip began on an early February morning. The night before, a winter storm had passed through and it had rained in the valley and the higher elevations got some snow. We very nearly postponed the trip because of the conditions, but decided to give it a shot and try to make it as far as we could. On this trip, it'd be my dad, the girlfriend Megan and I in my Jeep, and Megan's dad and stepmom Dave and Barb in their two-door Wrangler. His Jeep is a bit more built up height-wise, but this was his first time doing this trail. It was a small convoy, but a solid crew. We aired down not far in and got underway north. The first half of the trail was really quite uneventful, just your standard washboard dirt road. From nearly the beginning though, there was tons of standing water and many mud puddles. An early sign it would be a very wet day. By the time we reached the famous CK Rock at around the 11 mile mark, both jeeps were pretty muddy. Some a little more than others. As everyone does, we each took a turn getting a picture of our jeep on top of the rock. Dave's jeep climbed right up. The last time I took my jeep here was many, many modifications ago and I was left with a sad and embarrassing photo next to the rock. I was determined today to change that. It still took a bit of convincing with the mud, but after getting the right line, I made it up. Sure, my wheel was up in the air and it felt kind of tippy, but I finally had a nice poser photo. You're good, back on the ground. <laughs> Past CK Rock, the trail continued to get wetter and slowly more difficult. By this point, the surface was almost entirely a slightly slick mud with occasional rocks. We made good progress, taking our time on the wet trail as it twisted and turned deeper into the Bradshaws. After a small traffic jam, it was more smooth sailing uphill. Dave took a few of the optional bypasses along the way, but generally we stuck to the main trail. Up ahead, the snow-covered peaks came into view. At the 17 mile mark, we crossed the Prescott National Forest boundary and entered a part of the trail that crosses a private mining operation that has dramatically changed the trail. The road is diverted into a creek bed along the edge of the property. In the times we've been here before, it has been dry, but on a day like today, it was far from that. The water was flowing pretty good, but it generally didn't look too deep for the most part. We turned upstream and followed it along the trail. The wet, boulder-strewn bottom meant it was slow and go for a bit.
After clearing the first crossing, we continued through the mining area. The trail diverts left across the property and through a few large puddles and another flowing section of creek. A hard right turn out at the end was also slick. This section of trail certainly requires some good clearance and four-wheel drive, even in less wet weather. Overall though, this section wasn't too bad. We ended up getting some really cool photos and enjoyed the opportunity to drive up a flowing creek. We took a quick break at Fort Misery, just beyond this section, and returned to the trail shortly after. From here, the trail climbed more, and had several more sections of washouts and large exposed rocks to navigate, which required some careful tire placement and a slow pace. The trail remained muddy and wet, and was much narrower through here, although very scenic. The snow slowly appeared on the edge of the trail at first as we gained elevation. At this point, the trail was more slow and go, navigating lots of rocks and water crossings. With conditions the way they were, there had been virtually no other traffic other than a group of side-by-sides we had been playing tag with all day. Eventually, we met up with another Jeep duo and got a trail report from them. And it didn't seem great. They had turned around just a bit up ahead where there was a difficult boulder and the trail became snow-packed. The side-by-sides quickly turned around too. We decided to check out the conditions for ourselves. We had already spent several hours on the trail and really wanted to try and make it to Crown King at this point. The road continued to be very rocky as it climbed and eventually ended up along a shelf road. So far, the difficulty was about the same. As we dropped towards Oro Bell, that changed. After a water crossing, the road entered the snow and a steep rock ledge obstacle sent us up a running creek to get around. Once again, my jeep took a little more convincing and using a spotter to help me get the perfect line was necessary. But, we both made it up. The next obstacle had no bypass, and was on a narrow, snow-covered section. This is where the other crew had turned around. The fact that it was off-camber and very slick made it challenging. My Jeep just didn't quite have enough clearance and ended up getting just a little bit high centered on the top of the rock. Back up a little bit. We ended up using some boards and traction pads to get just enough extra grip to make it up and over, and used caution to avoid sliding off directly after. It was a full team effort, and the pucker factor was certainly high, but we made it. Now it was time to get the other Jeep over. Dave's tires didn't have as much grip, and even though he made it up over the rock easier, it took some really careful tire placement after to avoid sliding off the trail. Past this, we were on unbroken trail. 
There was probably only two to four inches of fresh snow, but enough to make it a winter wonderland. One of the side-by-sides joined our convoy and followed us the rest of the way up as we weaved through the former mining town of Orobel. And shout out to that guy for also helping to spot us over that last obstacle. The snow let up as we turned sharp and climbed up the final stretch. The views were phenomenal along this section. At the top, the snow returned and we resumed breaking trail. Things remained easy going and it was such a blast carving our way through the powder and frozen over puddles. Eventually, we made our way downhill and towards the end of the trail at Senator Highway, just outside of Crown King proper. We stopped to catch our breath and take a few more pictures from the top. The day had been such an adventure. I have never been on this trail in those kind of conditions before, and we were all glad that we decided to give it a shot and make it to the top. It had absolutely paid off. We headed for downtown Crown King where we got out of the cold weather and enjoyed some hard-earned food and celebratory beers. We had accomplished our mission and had a great day on the legendary back way to Crown King Trail. But that'll be it for this one, so as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.